It was in the summer of 2021 when reports came out that a strange signal was coming from the Milky Way. And as the human conscious sparks curiosity, we all craved to know its origins. It was another spectacular space mystery. It was a fast radio burst that was detected from within our galaxy, and it was the first time ever that it occurred. Here's the truth about the strange radio signals that NASA and other space agencies detected. The first encounter. It all started on April 28th of 2020, when the world had just started the quarantine lockdown. Two ground-based radio telescopes detected an intense pulse of radio waves. Although it only lasted a mere millisecond, it was a paramount discovery because it was the first time a radio burst, or FRB, had ever been detected so close to our planet. Analysis showed that it was located about 30,000 light years from Earth, meaning that it was surely within our Milky Way galaxy. Aside from NASA picking up the signal, the Canadian Hydrogen Intensity Mapping Experiment, simply known as CHIME, and the Survey for Transient Astronomical Radio Emission 2 with the codename STAIR2 also had no problem snatching the signal. As a matter of fact, the signal was actually so easily registered that CHIME wasn't even looking in the right direction, yet they heard the signal like a loud battle cry and immediately tuned in. According to Professor of Physics at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the signal was so potent Stair 2 also saw it, and it's only a set of a few radio antennae, literally made out of cake pans. This discovery was so significant because the only other signals or fast radio bursts that were remotely picked up came from outside our galaxy. Therefore, the other FRBs came from billions of light years away. Then, the next shocking news came when experts explained that the April 2020 discovery was also notable for being the most energetic radio blast that astronomers have ever recorded in the Milky Way. Keep in mind that the April 2020 Milky Way Galaxy FRB wasn't the first recorded. Actually, despite the load of challenges, astronomers have succeeded in building up a bank of knowledge about FRBs, most of which has been based on the dozens of recorded events from beyond our own galaxy. So we are aware of some vital details about their origins. First of all, it has been confirmed that they are bright flashes of radio light lasting for microseconds to milliseconds. And according to the experts, thousands of these bursts occur in the sky every day. The great majority of them come from billions of light years away. As for the exact origins of these FRBs, dozens of models have been presented to explain with progenitors ranging from neutron stars to white dwarfs to cosmic strings. But the science does unilaterally confirm that these strange radio signals come from very small sources that are no larger than a few hundred kilometers in size. The next step was to narrow down entities in space that fit the puzzle piece. And with that, astronomers found that the sources are neutron stars since they are not only small in size, but they also contain loads of energy. The FRB discovered in the Milky Way confirmed astronomers' theories, thanks to some nifty cosmic detective work involving the data of other telescopes monitoring the same patch of sky. Observational evidence now indicates that the origin of FRBs is more than likely a magnetar. A magnetar is a type of young neutron star born from the embers of supernovas with a magnetic field 5,000 trillion times more powerful than Earth's. This means astronomers have found the universe's most powerful magnets, the difficulties of finding a radio signal in space. Remember, the vastness of space is limitless. There are an infinite amount of stars, and that means that there are more stars than grains of sand on all the beaches of all our little green and blue planet. So even though Duncan Lorimer and David Narkovich were studying data taken by the Parkes Radio Dish in Australia in 2007, and they found a radio signal from space, that FRB was billions of light years away. So when they finally received an FRB from only 30,000 light years away, you can imagine the joy it brought them, finally. It meant that astronomers could learn more about the mysterious signal since they had a nearby source to study. Aside from the almost unimaginable distance, one of the other major problems with detecting FRBs is the fact that they are so fleeting. They come and go in the blink of an eye despite being 100 million times more powerful than the sun, they can release as much energy in a few thousands of a second as the sun in a hundred years. Ideally, astronomers would discover an object and focus one or more different telescopes on it, but the ephemeral nature of these bursts removes any such opportunity, making it 1,000 times more difficult to pick up those eluding FRBs. To further understand the struggle of detecting FRBs, we must consider the work that has gone into studying FRBs in relation to magnetars. Magnetars, which are known to emit high-energy electromagnetic radiation, notably gamma rays and X-rays, erupt in short-lived flares, and there has been speculation that radio waves could be emitted in such a process that would pinpoint magnetars as the source 
for FRBs. Then, when the latest FRB was discovered in our galaxy, it was found to have originated in the constellation of Vulpecula, which just so happens to be where the galactic magnetar SGR 1935 plus 2154 is located. It was also accompanied by a burst of x-rays that further reassured astronomers that their hypothesis was accurate. Even though this was an extraordinary discovery, leave it to scientists to label discovery with a dull name. In this case, astronomers referred to it as FRB200428. Here's the predominant significance of FRB200428. According to lead astronomers, the discovery of an FRB in our galactic neighborhood is significant because the proximity makes it a lot easier to follow up on the source with telescopes observing at other wavelengths. Around 1,000 FRBs have been detected since 2001, but they are notoriously difficult to track because they disappear in an instant and without a trace. Only 15 of them have been tracked to specific galaxies, but now we have one from our very own galaxy. None of the FRBs ever discovered have been known to emit at any other wavelengths, and this is the first detection of an FRB at a different wavelength. These observations can probe the source environment in greater detail, providing more clues about the origins of FRBs, and therefore our galaxy and the stars beyond. Now let's give credit where credit is due. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope was able to trace the locations of five deep space signals, or FRBs. They learned that they travel in a thousandth of a second and emit powerful blasts that generate as much energy as the sun does in an entire year. In a new study published in the Astrophysical Journal, researchers using Hubble's Wide Field Camera 3 were able to pinpoint five out of eight recent FRBs to their host galaxies. This was significant because they were able to confirm that the locations where the FRBs originated from all had one collective amazing feature. All of them came from distant galaxies with spiral arms where stars are actually formed. But keep in mind that they've kind of been subpar compared to other space agencies like Elon Musk's SpaceX in the last decade. As a matter of fact, NASA has outsourced SpaceX for various space expeditions and research missions. Nonetheless, astronomers around the world rejoiced as NASA revealed its first high-resolution view of a population of FRBs. NASA's Hubble telescope confirmed that five of them are actually localized near or on a galaxy's spiral arms. And it reinforced the assumption that most of the galaxies are massive, relatively young, and still forming stars. With NASA imaging, we now have a better idea of the overall host galaxy properties. Humankind now has a better understanding of mass and star formation rate Next, due credit goes to CHIME for particularly proving to be an essential tool. Based at the Dominion Radio Astrophysical Observatory in Canada, it's a novel radio telescope with no moving parts, and it has a high mapping speed thanks to its 200 square degree field of view and broad frequency range of between 400 megahertz and 800 megahertz. It is noted because most radio telescopes aren't able to pinpoint the location of an FRB well enough to associate it with a known object. Those that are able to localize FRBs with great precision usually look at small patches of sky and can only observe a patch about the size of the full moon. And most are not able to monitor several known magnetars at once. However, CHIME has the capacity to observe an area about 500 times larger, and it can therefore monitor all magnetars located in the northern sky every day. It combines its localization capabilities with the large sky area and that has allowed both the detection of these bursts and associate it with a known object. Since it's so revolutionary, it has quickly become the main observer of FRBs, with a correlator supercomputer processing 13 terabits of raw data per second to produce a radio map of its view of space. However, even though mankind is a big step further to understanding these intense radio blasts from the cosmos, the case is certainly not closed on the mystery of FRBs. Yet, it seems that humankind is progressing into the stars quite swiftly, and an understanding is certainly within our grasp. What do you think about the strange radio signals from space detected by NASA and other astronomy agencies?